One notational feature that you will end up using probably sooner than you think are tuplets. Now, tuplets is the overall term for what is normally considered as triplets, which is three notes played in the time it usually takes to play two. So three quavers in one beat, uh, three crotchets over two beats, stuff like that. But it also means that you can you can use five semiquavers in one beat, um, six semiquavers in one beat, seven. You can do any number of uh, notes across any number of beats. It's a very straightforward process, but there's one or two wee things just to be aware of. Let me show you. I have here a piece in four beats in a bar, 4-4. Four, four. So if I, for example, put four crotchets in, I'm going to do everything with the mouse so you can see what I'm doing. It's all straightforward enough. If I now, when I get to that point, the shortcut is control three. And I then have crotchet triplets. After that, I'm straight back in to normal crotchets. If, for example, I change it to quavers, I can put the first note in, then change it to a triplet. That's the technique. You put the first note in of the length of the note that you want, and then you change it to whatever length of triplet you want. Okay, so put the first note in as a triplet. Sorry, put the first note in, then change it to a triplet. Add what I want from there. Let's do semi quaver triplet, uh, quintuplets this time. So I can do one of those, and then control five means. I can put five notes in the time of one beat. Just for a laugh, why not? Let's do semiquavers again, but control seven. So I can then carry on E, F, G, A, B, C. There's my seven notes. And a crotch at the end of the bar. So that's how straightforward it is to put your standard normal types of triplets and triplets and quintuplets and etc. in. There are one or two other things you want to be aware of though. Sibelius allows you to use what are called nested triplets. Well, what's a nested triplet? I hear you ask. Well, let's say for example, in the middle of this note here, this is a crotchet. It's a triplet crotchet, but it's still a crotchet. But if I don't want that, if I want to have three quavers in there, what I can do is put a triplet within the triplet, nested triplet. So what I would do is I would turn that note into a, qua a quaver and then do control three again and I get triplet quavers. So I can do the A, then the B, then the C. So I can get a triplet within a triplet. To listen to that, Oh, again, all you have to do is hit the letter P to play it. Have a listen. So the playback is, of course, as accurate as you, you would expect from Sibelius. The one drawback that a lot of people have with this is the fact that when... I'll just demonstrate it here. I'll put a note in. Make a triplet, put the rest of the notes in. If I want another triplet, I have to do the routine again. Put the note in, change it to a triplet, put the note in, change it to a triplet. It's a bit time consuming. However, there's a feature, uh, a wee hidden feature in Sibelius called sticky triplets. And the way it works is as follows I'm going to put a note in there. I'm going to make it into a triplet using control three, same as usual. But I'm now, before I do anything else, I'm going to run a shortcut, shift alt K. So shift alt K and a wee three appears above the blue line. So now if I just carry on typing the note names, I get an E and an F, but I'm still going to put a triplet in without doing anything else now. I can do a G and it's still a triplet. F, E, carry on, D, still a triplet, C, and it's still a triplet, and it will carry on being triplets until I run the shortcut again. So I'll do one more there, 
Now I'll run the shortcut again, so Shift Alt K, and I can carry on now. But when I put another quaver in, it is a normal quaver, and that is sticky tuplets. And if you're aware of that, it can save you quite a lot of time when you're inputting lines of triplets like that.